the shores that round our coast from Deal to Ramsgate span. I met alone on a piece of stone an elderly naval man. His hair was weedy, his beard was long, and weedy and long was he. And I heard this white in a, sho- in a song recite in a singular minor key. <clears throat> Oh, I am a cook, and a captain bold, and a mate at a Nancy brig, and a bosun tight, and a midship might, and a crew with a captain's gig. Then he shook his fist and tore his hair, till I really felt afraid, for I couldn't help thinking the man had been drinking. So I simply said, Oh, elderly man, it is little I know of the duties of men of the sea, But I'll eat my hand if I can understand how you could possibly be at once a cook and a captain bold and the mate of the Nancy Brig and a bosun tight and a midship mite and the crew of the captain's gig. Then he made a hitch to his trousers, which is a trick all seamen learn, and having got rid of a thumping quid, he spun this painful yarn. "'Twas on the good ship, the Nancy Bell, "'that we sailed to the Indian Sea, "'and thar on a reef we come to grief, "'which has often occurred to me. "'Pretty nigh all the crew was drowned, "'twas seventy-seven a soul, "'but only ten of the Nancy's men "'cried here to the muster roll. "'Twas meself and a cook, and a captain bold, and the mate at an Nancy brig, and a bosun tight, and a midship might, and the crew of the captain's gig. Well, we gone a month without vittles nor drink, till a hunger we did feel. So we drawed a lot, and in a cordon shot the captain for our meal. The next lot fell on the Nancy's mate, and a delicate dish he made. Then our appetite with the midship might, we seven survivors stayed. Next, we murdered the bosun, who much resembled pig. Then we vittled free, did the cook and me, on the crew of the captain's gig. Till just myself and the cook was left, and the delicate question... Which of us two goes to the kettle arose? And we argued it out as such. For I loved that cook like a brother I did. And the cook well, he worshipped me. And we'd both be blowed if we'd either be stowed in the other chap's hold. You see. I'd be eat if you dines off me, says John. Yes, that says I will be. I'm boiled if I die, my friend, quoth I. Exactly so, quoth he. Oh, James, to murder me, what a foolish thing to do, for don't you see you can't cook? Me, well, I can and will cook you. Then he boiled the water, and he added the salt and pepper and portions true, which he never forgot, and some chopped shallot and sage and parsley too. Then he says with a proper pride, which his smiling features tell. Twill soothe and be if I let you see how extremely nice you'll smell. Then he stirs it round and round and round, and he sniffs at the foaming froth when I Ups with his heels and smothers his squeals in the scum of the boiling broth. And I eat that cook. In a week or less. And as I eat him be the last of his chops, why, I almost drops. For a vessel in sight I see. And now, I never grin, no, I never smile, I never dance nor play, 
but a single joke I have to croak, which is to say, oh, I am a cook and a captain bold and a mate of the Nancy brig and a bosun tight and a midship might and a crew of a captain's gig.